Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel for the next stage of my British campaign in Upfront. Now, as it's the 80th anniversary of the second Battle of El Alamein, uh, uh, the battle in fact was in full swing 80 years ago, the offensive having opened on the 23rd, I thought it would be very appropriate to set my campaign in the desert, of course, at the height of the uh, El Alamein battle. So my stalwart body of men, who I shall introduce to you now, are the standard British 10-man squad, as they are given in uh, many of the upfront scenarios. I thought they'd be a fairly good formation to start with because... Yes, they're somewhat lacking in snazzy weaponry. As you can see, you've got your sergeant with the machine pistol. You have the Bren gunner and everyone else has the good old Lee Enfield. But it gives me a fair degree of adaptability because as the campaign progresses, I can bolt equipment onto them. I can give them the support of the occasional vehicle, which I'm intending to do. Now, the, the squad here is going to be the core of my campaign. Their, their um, survival, really, is going to make or break the campaign for me. If I suffer casualties from their supporting units or supporting equipment, I mean, it's all very unfortunate, but those fellows were on loan from a different part of the uh, brigade or whatever, so it doesn't affect my core chaps, the people that I'm really, really emotionally invested in. Um, so I've ha I've decided that today is very much going to be a briefing before we leap into action because there's a few things I want to talk through. Um, I've decided that three missions is probably quite adequate for a um, a squad of this size because it's going to be a pretty intense battle. None of the missions I've lined up for them are going to be easy. And to be perfectly honest, I'm going to be slightly surprised if I come through this with my squad intact. But anyway, I, I, will, leave, I will leave all that horror for when we actually begin the fighting in the next video. I did make an interesting discovery. It was something I'd slightly forgotten because I'd not looked at the uh, uh, campaign rules for a while. At least not since I'd done my brief campaign video using the Soviets. It's that while, while Upfront provided campaign roster sheets for the Germans, the Soviets and the United States, they slightly neglected to do this with the expansion. So uh, with, with the application of a bit of British ingenuity, I've, I've had to do my own uh, uh, handwritten one. I apologise for the writing, but, you know, it, it was... Uh, it was done a bit on the fly. So following the pattern that's set uh, as given in the, the um, campaign templates for the other three armies I mentioned, I've basically followed the same format of names of men and their weapons, their ranks. I mean, everyone is KIA on an eight, uh, a mem an aid memoir that squad leaders and assistant squad leaders, if they fall, have to be replaced by transfer. And of course, the morale and panic ratings. Now, you, you'll see that I've done those in pencil because they are subject to change over the course of the campaign, depending on how your boys do. Um, hopefully, they will cover themselves in glory and I will be moving those morale and panic numbers up and even be uh, earmarking a couple of them for promotion. But I don't want to get ahead of myself just yet. So I mentioned a second ago that I decided upon three missions for this force. And they are all based upon the standard missions that you find in the upfront uh, rule books and the expansion books. But I've tweaked them very slightly to make them appropriate for the Desert War. And I've tried to tie them into the wider narrative of the uh, British El Alamein offensive, which thankfully for them was the final one which got the Germans moving in what the British regarded as the right direction. Uh, so it's going to involve a lot of intense fighting. There are going to be moments when the when my squad is actually slightly under-resourced in terms of what it's expected to achieve. And, and that is deliberate because for all the firepower and logistical support they laid in, 
There were elements along the front line where the fighting was very touch and go for the British and Commonwealth forces, and the German defences were formidable, even though they were under-resourced themselves. So I realise that's probably impossible to read from here, but I'm going to zoom in on it anyway. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the first mission, as you can see, is going to be a night mission. Um, the backstory I've come up with for my squad is that they are new arrivals. They're reinforcements who've arrived a few days into the campaign and their unit's turn is up. They are going to be thrown into the offensive the next day. And my chaps for the first mission have drawn the short straw, unfortunately. There is need for a preliminary reconnaissance just to see what is in front of us because that's the area we're going to be advancing into the next day. So as far as we are aware, there is a German presence ahead of us and it is believed that they have an anti-tank weapon of some sort. We don't know exactly what. So the job of my squad in mission one is to determine what exactly this weapon is. If we can, we are to destroy it. And as an added topping of the cake, if we possibly can break the German defenders in the process. Now that may well be a tall order, depending on what we find. The mission is going to take place at night, so at least we're thankfully uh, uh, undercover and it could get close, it could get dirty. Um, our immediate superiors are very generously giving us a um, universal carrier in support. And all right, it's nice to have the thing along with us, but, you know, I really would have preferred a Sherman or two. But admittedly, they are not quite so subtle. I mean, not that a universal carrier is all that subtle, but hey, that's what we've been given. So, as I say, find out what the Germans have got and destroy it if we can before the end of the mission. Mission two is a meeting engagement and it represents the next day when the offensive opens. Uh, so as part of a larger uh, brigade or even divisional advance, we're to go forward, not having had much rest from the night before, and seize our designated objectives. Now, I have slightly adapted the jungle meeting engagement scenario from Banzai for this one. In that one, you score victory points uh, and, and you essentially win the scenario by occupying more jungle terrain than the opponent. In the context of the desert, I've turned it into you, you have to hold more escarpments than the enemy. So whoever holds the most escarpments by the end of the scenario, unless one squad has succeeded in breaking the other first, uh, is, is the winner. So it's really about seizing um, tactically important terrain so that the advance can then be further developed and really about turfing the Germans out of their initial defensive line. This is going to be a difficult and a bloody one because it takes place in daylight, of course. So um, that's, uh, that's not going to be much fun. And finally, assuming there's anything left of my poor squad by this point, um, the last mission is going to be assaulting the pillbox. And this is going to be assumed to take place perhaps 24 hours after mission two because we're not supermen i imagine my poor fellows will want a bit of sleep by that point um but once they've recovered themselves and had a chance to refit a little bit the backstory with the final mission of this part of the campaign is that the main german forces are beginning to pull out they're beginning to get worn down and rommel has reluctantly ordered his retreat However, they have left a series of strong points uh, behind to hold the British and Commonwealth forces off for as long as they possibly can. And luck being the fickle lady that she is, one of these strong points is directly in front of our brigade. Sigh. So guess which squad draws the short straw in terms of knocking this behemoth out. Now, it will just be my squad, remnants thereof, but um, our superiors, again, will very generously give us a demolition charge. Whoopee. Um, 
And our only task really is to destroy the pillbox and the defenders in it. Our supporting units can be assumed to take care of the rest of the German squad who are not actually in the pillbox. So even if we don't break the German squad, as long as we wipe out the pillbox or neutralize it as a threat, that is all we need to do. That will count as a victory. And again, because, you know, we, we don't really fancy committing suicide that much. Mission three is also going to be a night mission. So I'm looking forward to quite a bit of uh, uh, an interesting time with this one. I, I, I think I've set myself some very interesting tactical challenges. Um, of course, I will be playing with the full run of desert terrain rules as given in the Desert War rulebook. I will also be making extensive use of the night rules, which I find rather fun. They completely change the dynamic of this game in a really, really good way. And lastly, I am going to be... What am I going to be? Sorry, I've just had what we tend to refer to as a brain fart, where I forgot my final point. Um, no, okay, so I'm going to be using the... Uh, the desert terrain rules and the night rules fairly extensively. And I think, I think that was everything. Uh, oh yes, I've just remembered, apologies for that. In terms of replacements, uh, really to save on paperwork, I am, I am going to slightly modify the usual rules for campaign replacements in that I'm going to assume that there's a pool of reason, reasonably well-trained soldiers um, waiting behind the line so that if I do suffer any casualties, I will simply replace them with a man with an equivalent uh, weapon from the larger British roster. However, just to counterbalance this, if I'm very unlucky and I suffer heavily and there are no appropriate men um, that I can bring forward, then I will simply have to advance with gaps in my line. So in some ways it's good, in some ways it's not. But that that is the situation as of the 28th of October, 1942. So I'm hoping that I'll be able to play this campaign out before the 11th, 12th of November um, so that I can... Um, I can actually play the this campaign out within the confines of the historical El Alamein campaign. It would be really great if I can do that, but as we all know, real life is what it is, and I may have to overrun or similar, but I'll do my best. Oh yes, one last thing. I've had many, many comments from folks who've um, drawn my attention uh, or, or reminded me, I should say, of the really excellent and simple solitaire rules that are given in the Banzai rulebook. And I do actually like them. I know my default tends to be to just pick up the decks of cards, uh, uh, sorry, the hands of cards of both sides and just play them through as honestly as I can. But I realise that while I, that's basically been my modus operandi for nearly every video I've made for this um, for this series on Upfront. So what I'm going to do with this campaign is I am going to use the solitaire rules as given in Banzai because they are great. They do add to the tension, but they're not like some of the more complicated solo AI rules that I've seen um, generated for um, Upfront. Now, don't get me wrong, there are some amazing rules um, fan-generated that were either published in the general magazine, or I think you can even find a lot of them um, on Board Game Geek. I downloaded one. It was hugely complicated. It was pa pages and pages long, but it it played the other side very intelligently, but the only downside is it became quite involved, as these things tend to. So I really like the approach that the Banzai rulebook took, which, you know, it, it devoted a quarter of the page, if that, to optional rules, where it just talked about keeping cards face down when you draw them for both sides, just to add to the, the fog of war and the uncertainty. 
and just be as honest as you can, which is something that I'm already uh, quite familiar with in terms of how I play solitaire. So I'm going to give that a whirl just to give you guys a chance to see how how Banzai's very basic solitaire system works in practice. And so I think that covers everything. So I will give my chaps a chance to rest up and ponder their fate. I am hoping to open the battle tomorrow. So we'll get our night mission appropriately enough tomorrow evening and we'll see how it plays out. But um, I hope you will all join me for that. Um, in the meantime, as always, a huge thank you for being with me for this video. Uh, it's always a pleasure to see you all. And um, to my regulars, as always, a really heartfelt thanks for, for still coming back for more after all this time. I really, really appreciate it. You guys do make making these videos worthwhile. Um, to anyone who's relatively new or perhaps even joining me for the first time, a huge hello to you. Welcome to the campaign. Welcome to the benighted war zone that is El Alamein. Um, if you're here because of Upfront, welcome. It's one of my favourite games, as you can probably tell from the number of videos I've obsessively made about it. Um, please check out some of those, um, or if you're just generally interested in wargaming, please have a look at some of the other videos I've done on this channel. In any case, you are more than welcome, and it's really good to see you. But whoever you are and whatever's brought you here, um, just to say a huge thank you again. I really appreciate you tuning in, and I will see you for the next one. Until tomorrow, gentlemen, goodbye and good night. Thank you.